Welcome here into the ring, the supervisor of the International Boxing Organization, Andile Wilberforce Batika from South Africa. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, at this time, I welcome our former world champions and legends into the ring, Azuma Zoom Zoom Nelson. I also welcome here into the ring, Ike Bazooka Quarte. Also here in the ring, we'll welcome Joshua the Hita Clote. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to welcome here into the ring an ambassador for the Bukum Boxing Arena, the Lord Mayor of Accra. Put your hands together for Mohammed Ajesoa. And now we also welcome into the ring the president of the Ghana Boxing Authority, lawyer Peter Zuedes. We welcome also into the ring the managing director of Multi Choice Ghana, Mr. Cecil Sunkwa Mills, and also the deputy director general of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, Kofi Safo Marfo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with a big round of applause. We welcome the boxer from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Fernando Saucedo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to welcome into the ring the champion. Please put your hands together as we welcome Emmanuel, the Game Boy Tego.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've arrived at that moment everybody's been waiting for. The main event of the evening coming to you from the Bukum Boxing Arena in the heart of Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Live on DSTV Supersport to the rest of the African continent and the rest of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to inform everyone here that every fan in the heart of the Bukum Boxing Arena are protected and insured by Glyco Insurance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to also acknowledge the very kind support of the Ghana Supporters Union Boxing. The Ghana Boxing Supporters Union. Also, our sponsors, Multi-Choice Ghana Limited, Men's Gold, Paradise Back Mineral Water, Joy Tredia Ginger, Glyco Insurance, Run Energy Drink, Go TV and DSTV. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you this main event of the evening, the IBO Lightweight Championship of the World. And at this time, we will observe the national anthems of the two nations involved. We will begin with Argentina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the Republic of Ghana.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the officials are good to go. The legends are good to go. The fans all over Africa who are joining us for our DSTV Supersport are good to go. The judges are good to go. And the boxers in the center of the ring are good to go. So tap your feet as we move to the boxing beat. And I ask you that big question. A-C-C-R-A, -C -C are you ready? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I go straight to the introduction of the boxer fighting out of the blue corner. Trained by the Salcedo brothers and coming in with yellow and green trunks with a record of 61 wins, 6 losses, 3 draws, 10 of the wins coming by way of knockout. He weighed in at 135 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a former interim WBO Latino Super Featherweight Champion, a former IBF Latino Super Featherweight Champion, a former lightweight champion of Argentina. Ladies and gentlemen, El Centro de la Buenos Aires, Fernando David El Vasco! And now, ladies and gentlemen, he stands across the ring in the red corner, trained by the legendary, marvelous Nanayao Kunedu of Ghana. Coming in with a good record of 27 wins, one loss, 13 of the wins coming by way of knockout and spotting green, white, and red trunks tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, he weighed in at 135 pounds. And of course, a former, WBA International Champion, a former. IBF Intercontinental Champion, a former. WBO Africa Champion, and now the IBO Lightweight Champion of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Accra, Ghana, I present to you the champion, Emmanuel, the Game Boy. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, to the officials, the supervisor, Andile Wilberforce Matika of South Africa, with his assistant, Michael Tete of Ghana. Judges in the ring, Tembisile Terence Makazula of South Africa, John Shipanuka of Zambia, and Huilo Piraz of Italy. And now to the man in the center of the ring, the very experienced Roger Barno. Good evening, guys. You're doing 12, three rounds for the IBO World Lightweight Championship of the World. Obey my command. No hitting below the belt. Watch your head at all times. Obey my command. If I say stop, you stop. You score a knockdown. You go to the final rest neutral corner. Any question, Nima? Any question, Salcido? Good luck and shake hands. The wait is over. The main bout of the evening now on. Emmanuel Ortego. And he's fighting from the red corner in the white and green trunks. And also the Argentine Fernando Sacido, the, the challenger for the title in the yellow and green. Good overhead shot there from Emmanuel Ortego. Good impression, good starts. Well, it's very important. He need to instill the fear of God in him. He need to also indicate that, look, that is what 
that is what you are in for. Trust me, Sacido, you are in for trouble. And so he set the stage now for the excellent hostilities that we, we await. Let's hope we're going to see a flurry of um, punches in this bout. The previous or uh, the undercards, you know, we saw very, very little. You know, and most of them you know, didn't really meet our expectations. Also, it didn't travel beyond four rounds. Sacido trying to fight back, but a good reply with the jabs there from Imano Otego. Goes in strongly there. One and two combinations. Just typical of Imano Otego. No, that was a ghost punch. Sacido fighting back. And Imano Otego, you know, what do you remember of his um, you know, fight? I, for me, I, I, I think that bout against Malik Jaber, that was um, back in 2007, was you know, the best. You know, I saw from Tego, it's ended in a draw. And Sacido uh, uh, goes down, but I think that's uh, a slip. A slip, a slip. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also a little push. Yeah. And Referee Bano is trying to, you know, talk to him. And Sacido, you can say he, it was a rabbit punch. And he goes down once again. And that's, will still not be a knockdown. No, this was a knockdown. Uh. No, 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 no. And he's been talked to Imano Otego. Yeah, because he, I mean, there, was a, there was a push um, on the neck, and that is illegal. You know, less than 55 seconds remaining for the end of round one. Otego dictating, you know, passing with a straight right. Uh, trying to work downstairs, some body shots. Sacido will repel him with his left you know, shot, but then goes in with a clinch. There's early days here for Sacido to be clinching. This is just the first one. But Game Boy, excellently very well, being the aggressor. The aggressor. I mean, going with excellent combinations, with consistent jabs, and making sure that he, he kept the pressure on Sacido. Uh, Unless, unfortunately, that's an uppercut that really did not land effectively. Unfortunately, he's not been able to create the needed opening uh, for a punch. But so far, uh, this round is a round that closely is going to Game Boy. If anything good about this first round, it, I must say, is Game Boy beating Sacido to the punch. And he goes in again with the left to the right with combinations. And of round one. The bell has saved Sacido. That's when Game Boy was getting into his rhythm and started throwing some excellent punches. Sacido was saved by the bell. You know, but we saw the trainer of Sacido involved in a hot exchange with referee Roger Bano. They were not impressed with the way Imano Tego boxed, especially with the rabbit punches that came in. The trainer has no business engaging a referee in an argument. He has no business doing that. He is to concentrate on his boxer and let him know what a strategy for the next round is. So Tego went in with some combinations. And this was the first incident. And the referee failed to rule that as a knockdown. Tego continued with a left and right. You know, trying to open up the defense. And he was successful. This was a hefty right hook. Nearly days Saxedo. Tego is very good boxer, so he should keep the consistent work that he started. Good footwork, excellent uh, uh, jabs, and good combinations, and be the aggressor. You know, we talked about the last time Mono Tego was in the ring, and that was back in December 2016. You know, more than a year, a little over a year, he's been inactive. Would that count? There were fears and questions were raised in the press conference you know, but the chief executive of baby jet promotions you know rubbish that and he said his boxer will be in good condition you know the opening minutes of um, this bout you know i think he looks sharper you know not yeah, very sharp very sharp you could see i mean he started this this round with excellent jobs good body shots trying to create that opening um in order to make sure that he's sending as uh, a superb uh, left hook that he landed uh, before the end of 
the uh, first round. So he started very well and he's trying as much as possible uh, to dominate this particular bout and he's gotten into his rhythm. You know, he's winning with the jabs and going in with the right. You know, Sacido also trying to fight back rather astonishingly. So far, he's, he's really not giving any um, serious um, challenge of stiff opposition to Game Boy. He's struggling to phantom what really Game Boy strategy is up to. And so Game Boy is really dominating. You know, it's Tego. And Sacido is complaining, talking about elbows and headbacks from Emmanuel it's, Tego. It's an unnecessary complaining. I mean, look, that, that the elbow is part of the difference. I mean, it's, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. You should concentrate and fight. No, Too was... many complaints will not help him. You should concentrate, keep his focus, try to get to his stride, get his rhythm going, and, and put up a sterling performance. Sacido, the journeyman, also older. And he goes in with a you know, wide left shot. Game Boy is trying to you know, tame his man and take control of this fight. He's moving around, chasing him everywhere. And fighting in the middle. And he's not giving Sacido any breathing space at all. Goes in with body shots, the uppercut from Imano Tego. Sacido replies. But Tego should be very careful he doesn't walk into a punch. Now this is a dangerous moment when you are when you are on the ascendance, very aggressive and throwing a lot of punches. He must also very, be very careful of an uppercut to avoid an uppercut. So while he's doing that, he should be very careful about his footwork and his foot positioning. It, okay. Whereas he's on attack. Absolutely. Tego winning, you know, by the points. He's throwing more punches. Less than the final 20 seconds remaining in round two. Let's see how it goes. Emmanuel Tego with a straight right. Sacido, you know, trying to you know, come back into this fight. Tego combination and he goes upstairs, you know, with some punches and against the rope. Sacido drops and that will be a knockdown. That's a knockdown. Absolutely. And I don't know what he's complaining about. That is absolute knockdown. You know, that was precious attack there from Imano Otego. Did well, you know, with the punches. They were clean punches. And by far, the menstrual, uh, I, I, I think. I, I, Rose referee Roger Bano, you are a referee. Instruct the boxer to go and fight. If he refuses and he challenges you, deduct him a point. And that's what he's doing. You don't engage in bantam with the boxer. And you are the referee in charge. What you do is I ask him to go to the neutral corner while you resolve the matter. If he refuses and contest you, go to the judges and ask that the point to be deducted. End of round two. And clearly, Emmanuel Game Boy Tego is on top of the champion. Definitely, it's a round he's won. I mean, it's a, it was a round he was dominating already. The round that would have ended him at 10-9, but because of the knockdown, he win this particular round 10-8. Uh, that was Tego trying to go upstairs. He did well with the combinations. And then pull it up with a left hook. And that left Sacido sprawling on the ropes. I like this. There's a, there's a, there's a right hook. And the pull up. That's a body shot. There's a left hook. And there's a body shot again that landed him. That's excellent combination coming from him and the game ball. And then his translator. The referee, the referee has no business going to the corner. The a lot of confusion in the corner of Fernando Sacido. But then he's back for the start of round three. As we get underway here, three of the 12 scheduled in this IBO lightweight title. Tego continuing from where he left off with some combinations downstairs, but then he misses. And Sacido connects again with the left. And quickly, Emmanuel Tego will reply. Game Boy Tego follows up again, doubling up the punches. You realize and that hoping. Sacido has uh, actually decided to protect his guard, his defense. And so what Game Boy started to do is to work on the body. Excellent deliver, excellent body shot to force Sacido to drop to drop his guard, which he's doing very well. We realize that Sacido has dropped his rear guard. And now he's looking for the opening. Game Boy is looking for the opening. In a moment like that, you, you, you relax and make sure that you are landing the right punches that will take 
who takes Osido off his guard. But unfortunately, he, he rather went into him without that timing, sense of timing. And so it has enabled Osido to escape. You know, absolutely. And you can see that, you know, Tego, right from the start, you know, had the right tactic to attack and attack. And that's pain of Sassido has you know, occasionally been fighting back, but he's not got a oof there to throw Emmanuel Tego off gear. It's all been about Tego detecting the pace now. You know, with the punches, asking questions. And a straight right from Sassido. Sassido goes in with the body shots. But it doesn't look like it's rattled Emmanuel Tego in any way. He's still strong coming back. At the receiving end, would he fight back against the ropes? Sassido is now fighting. And there's a, a big smile on the face of Tego, trying to suggest that it's nothing. And he drops his gum shirt, and so point to be deducted from Sassido. I think he's becoming temperamental in this round. And he's also acting highly unprofessional for a boxer with the number of years of experience that he has. You don't expect him and his corner to be displaying high level of professionalism and naivety at this level. Game Boy just keeping his focus on and trying to land the cleaner punches. We've got less than a minute in this third round. Imano Tego still on the attack. Sassido against the ropes. And he will try you know, fighting back. He's missing a lot of um, his, you know, punches. Be because he's not taking his time to fight according to a particular rehearsal strategy. And Tego was picked there. He saw that you know, left hook coming from Sacido. And Swerve is now Game Boy with Sacido behind the ropes. No, Sassido against the ropes now, Game Boy fighting, but couldn't punish him enough. And so the Argentine managed to you know, get away. And he's now in the center rattle, of the ring, yes. He's trying to ruffle him. Um, that is what he's trying to ruffle him to see whether it's possible for him to frustrate Game Boy. And so that is that is the strategy that he's come back. Excellent combination coming from Game And Boy. the ring once again has saved Sassido at the end of the round. You know, good display there from Game Boy. He's throwing the punches. He's doing what a champion must do, you know, in defense of his title. So far, so good. He's going away of Imano Tego. Yeah, so far, so very good. Nice. Body shot, an uppercut, a right hook, a left hook. Even though a lot of them were blocked by Sacido, I still, still think that um, Yamada Game Boy has been consistent with his job, with his combination. He's been very aggressive. And for me, I think that a lot, some of the punches have landed very well. And it has really made it difficult for Sacido. You know, Sacido has struggled to get into his rhythm. It's because of the intensity of how Game Boy has, uh, has fought so far. And that has made it difficult for him to get into his rhythm. He's struggling to really actually display an excellent art of boxing uh, so far. So seeing with somebody who has been a Gentile champion, a Latino champion, look, he's been rattled so far in the rounds that have, we actually seen uh, the first three rounds as we go into round four. Round four underway. Emmanuel Game Boy Tego in the green and white trunks and he's fighting Argentine opponents. Fernando Sacido, and that was a good shot. And he's complaining once again. The referee must ask him to go to the neutral corner, which he has accordingly done. And, and then he has to warn Game Boy. And once again, he feels vindicated, Saxido, that Game Boy is playing dirty. Just imagine how would the scorecards be like. You know, that's another punch. And that won't be a knockdown. And once again, Tego is now becoming What the referee agitated. must do is to deduct a point for him on a Tego. I think that Bano must be firm 
is one of the key attributes of a referee that is officiating a world title. You must be fair. And so the number not once, not twice, if it does it more than three times, you need to deduct a point. It is very important that this are the standard application of the laws at this level. And the referee at this level officiating the world title, you must make sure that you are fair. And Emmanuel Tego is in trouble this time around because he's been one too many. And the referee has asked the judges to accordingly deduct him points. Absolutely. Sacido is, is making the most of this. And yeah, maybe that's the, the breather he gets, you know, in this bout. Tego with a good, you know, connection there. He goes in. Drops the right. And uh, Sacido is trying to fight back. He want to be rough. He also want to be rough. Again. Absolutely. And he dropped his elbow as well. You know, good with Sacido against the ropes. Game Boy now throwing punches. But he needs the perfect combinations. He's getting there. The power punches are missing. In moments like this, you need to pummel him with power punches, get combination, and finish him up. You know, but still, and he's literally asking him to attack. But Game Boy hasn't got that killer punch. And this is turning you know, into something else. And this will be the second time He's deliberately dropped his gum shield. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. And at this level, this you don't exhibit this kind of unprofessional conduct. <laughs> and Sacido was you know, beating through a bit of um, trickery. Now, what in, in situation like this, that is what happens. Protect yourself. When the referee give the signal after the gum has been placed in your mouth that go ahead and fight. If you the fighter, you are not alert, you'll be hit with a punch, and it's a legitimate punch. You know, but that was, uh, maybe the argument would be that was unprofessional from Tego trying to... No, the, the, the referee, I saw the referee, what the referee do is spread a hand and signal, fight on. You know, but all, what he also did was, he pointed out that something was, had gone wrong, and yeah, that so, took his attention. But off. he should have, in moments like this, when it's an incident, the referee must ask the other boxer to go to a neutral corner. Protect. If he fails to do that, then it means that, impliedly, the referee won the fight to continue. Because and if he had not directed Sosido to go to the neutral corner, it means fight on. And it's still Tego now, you know, with the upper hand, dictating the pace, and he's dropping all the punches, but still, there's no power. Sacido and Tego end of round four, and it's been threatening. Very with a lot of controversies. And for me, the illegal punches from both boxers are not the best. I expect you know, a lot of talk. And then Tego is getting a lot of um, talk. I've seen Mr. Randy Abbey in the corner. Yeah, he's trying to put a train concern. You know, with, um, he, he, ha he has too much quality. He doesn't need to be engaged in a lot of the illegal punch. He doesn't need it. He has too much quality to be succeeded. Yeah, All he needs to do is to come down and actually fight within his reason. Fight in a ring. Fight. I've not seen him fight in angles. He needs to fight in angles and make sure that consistently, anytime he applies the jab, create the opening with combinations, you see that Sosido struggle, but he's not been able to do that consistently. Absolutely, he should try also to.